Today we are going to talk about a rather unpopular topic because it limits some of the things that people can do on the internet and what they're used to being able to do on the internet, especially in settings like school. Uh, it's copyright. What can I fairly use from other works and put that inside of my projects? So, first, what is copyright? Well, there's this cute little video that I'd like you to watch. It is linked down at um, below this. It's called a uh, Fairly Use Tale, I believe is what the title is. Yes, a Fairy Use Tale. Uh, it's entertaining in that it, it talks about what copyright is, especially in terms of what you're allowed to do in educational settings and what you're allowed to do in some other settings and you'll notice on the lower right here and side here I have a Creative Commons license this is a special kind of license that dictates that this is usable you can use this and have rights to this but there's certain categories of things like for example um, you see how there's a little person in the corner that says it has to be attributed. You have to say who created this and I'm just linking to it and you never have to say anything about a link. So you're just going to click on the link and then all the information about who it's created by will ob be obvious. Uh, you can't profit from it in most of these Creative Commons licenses. It's rare that you see someone allows profit and that's right there. The next little icon with the line through it. And then finally, um, the last part talks about whether or not you can change it and modify it. So this obviously says, yeah, you could go ahead and, and remix it, kind of, so to speak, and change it and, and make it a little bit different. So take a minute, pause this video, come back to it, and watch a fairly used tale. Okay, welcome back. I'm glad you had a chance to watch that video. And if you didn't, make sure you go back and watch it. So here's the most important point. Fair use, the ability to use somebody else's work in your project, is a legally defensible position. This still means you can be sued. This is critical to understand. That if you are using somebody else's work and you believe it's fair use, and if they especially tell you to stop using it, and you choose not to, they can sue you, take you to court, and you can try to defend what you're doing as fair use. Now, often what happens in these kind of cases, and what you've probably seen on things like YouTube, is that when you have something that you're using somebody else's work, they'll send you a notification, tell you, hey, this is ours, we don't want you using it, take it out. And at that point, probably the best thing for you to do is to find some other resource that you can use in your project because it's really just not worth the legal fight. You would still have to retain a lawyer. You would still have to go to court. And even if you win, you'd be out the money for missing work, for missing school, for paying for a lawyer. All that stuff is non-reimbursable even if you win. So be careful if somebody says to you in uh, a notification or an email hey cease and desist do not put this information in your presentation then uh, take it out that's simple but let w let's see what would be actually legally defensible so here's the guidelines um, it focuses on three main topics they are brevity spontaneity and the cumulative effect of the use of works and this is for specifically by educators which would include you guys it would include students and librarians so this is what you're allowed to do as a student in school so brevity first uh, there's very specific guidelines about what is brevity poetry is a poem that is less than 250 words or the first 250 words. Prose, a complete work of less than 2,500 words or 10% of a longer work, uh, if it's a minimum of 500 words. That's what we consider a longer work. And then finally, image. Well, this is a little questionable, right? Uh, what image is... Uh, 
viable, what image is not. In terms of books, you can use one picture per book. If it's a periodical, you can use one picture per periodical. If it's a website, well, there are some things that you can do. Um, there is a court case that was filed in 2009, and it was demanding damages that could have been a total of $3.6 million, and it claims that BuzzFeed infringed on his copyright in a photograph he posted showing a soccer player heading a ball. According to BuzzFeed, uh, the photo without his consent in a collection entitled The 30 Funniest Header Faces, published in June 2010. After he sent the BuzzFeed to take down the notice, the company removed the photo and renamed the collection The 29 Funniest Header Faces. By that time, however, uh, he alleged that the set of images, including his photo, had spread virally and it was all over the place. After he registered the complaint with the U.S. Copyright Office in 2011, uh, the uh, lawsuit went f further, and he was looking to recover um, some pretty significant damages. So BuzzFeed, you know, had to hire a lawyer and go ahead and defend their right to have had this picture. Uh, there are four factors that really fall into the uh, perspective of the court when they're looking at that. The first is the purpose and character of the use. Why were you using it? And if it's um, for commercial versus nonprofit educational purposes, uh, you can also use it for satire. That's okay to use. Otherwise, we'd never have Saturday Night Live. Um, the nature of the work that's copyrighted. Uh, what did you actually use and how much of it and does it substantially, and this is where the money part comes in, does it substantially affect the, the copyright work as a whole? In other words, did you limit the value of the material by including it in your project? In other words, did you profit from the project in a way that took value away from the other person's project. So that's really, really subjective and really hard to figure out. And then finally, the effect of the use upon the, oh, actually, that was the last piece, the market value of the copyrighted material. So you can look up that case. Uh, I can link this article for you, too, in our pages, and you can read the rest of the article yourself. Spontaneity. This is the amount of time to get permission uh, would require, uh, would preclude the use of its use in teaching materials. So in other words, if there is a news article, um, newscast last night, and I as a teacher wanted to use it in my class, because it's spontaneous, uh, I would be able to show it the next day. Uh, I wouldn't be able to spend weeks down the road and then show it. I would only be able to show it the next day in class. After that period, I would have to take some time to look for permission to show it. So if I wanted to continue showing it from year after year, I, I might have to get permission from the news agency to show it. And what's the cumulative effect? Is the material only for one course? Uh, are we limiting the amount of copied material from one author? Why is there a limit, really? So um, the idea is to not get sued. The material belongs to people. It's their content. It's not like you write something and have to go through a special process in order to get this copyright in existence. It exists as soon as you create something. And this is here to protect people from uh, other people taking advantage of their ideas not actually not ideas ideas are not copyrightable from their works uh, you can have an idea and then create a work and the idea you can't copyright but you can create copyright the work or the work is automatically copyrighted so if you for example wrote a song and you really liked it and there was no copyright that didn't exist someone could come along and just take your song and make 
millions of dollars off of it and never give you a penny. That's essentially what it comes down to. Um, so you would have the right then to sue that person under copyright law and say, hey, this was mine. And then you could get your millions of dollars back. They did um, punitive damage to you by using your product in such a way that um, you can no longer profit from it. You can get around how do you avoid getting sued uh, using Creative Commons, and there are some resources here. This is all going to be linked in the PowerPoint that you can click all these links. Oops, I'll have to add that. Um, you can uh, make your own Creative Commons, and there's a website. So if you want to add Creative Commons to your projects, you can. It's creativecommons.org, and you can go through and choose what kind of Creative Commons you would like, and it tells you what all those are, and then it gives you this cute little icon that you could stick at the bottom of your work and let people know, hey, yeah, you can use this, but mm, you can use it within these following qualifications, like you can't profit from it, or you need to tell everybody I created it, or uh, you can't change it, but you can use it. So there's a couple different levels of Creative Commons that you can do, and all that information is here on the Creative Commons website. Feel free to start your own public domain kind of sort of image library. That way, when you're ready to use an image, you have the ability to pull your own images from pictures that you have taken or things that you have specifically found and searched for and listed as Creative Commons. And you've put in that link, the Creative Commons information in with the where the file is. You've made a note of that somewhere, so that way you can include the reference. And this is a great way to kind of streamline your workflow that you have a collection of stuff that you use, whether it's pictures that you've taken or pictures you've taken from somewhere else. When you're ready to design a website or design some other school project, you have access to that. And if it's your own image, you could commercial from it. You, you could do whatever you want. So I encourage you, bring your camera around, you, your phone's constantly taking B-roll pictures. You know, you see a pretty sunset, you see a nice flower, you see a picture. You see the stream, you take some skyline pictures, whatever you want, it's great imagery to use as backdrops and backgrounds. So that is all for our presentation today. I hope you learned a lot about copyright, and I will see you next time.